really. I should have defeated them. But anyway, I left that to others. The Weasley family is the glue that keeps everything together in the Harry Potter franchise. But sometimes even they could get into some pretty sticky situations behind the scenes. All the mischief this family didn't manage on set made for some pretty magical blooper binging. From Rupert just not focusing to some actual twin mayhem, we've got your Weasley dose for the day. Number 1. Surprise, surprise. Ronald Weasley can't focus. You just shut your mouth. I do. <laughs> you just shut your mouth. Ron wasn't always known to be the smartest of the group, but did Rupert Grint take this character on in real life? There's just way too many corpsing and unfocused moments that we're surprised he even got through filming. He does it all the time and you'll ask him what we laugh at and he goes, I don't know. We can't even find the funny part of his lines to produce so much giggling. All the sorries in the world couldn't make up for this amount of flubs and the rest of the cast just couldn't get enough of it. My grand said it's a daily profit that's rubbish. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Maybe the filming days were just too long for this Weasley to fight the sleepies. Number two, it ended out as a kiss, but with the awkwardness behind the scenes, how did it end up like this? <laughs> Everyone could sense this was going to happen. Emma and Rupert knew, but really kept it deep down as to not face the inevitable outcome. This was an explosive smooch moment for the fans, but for them... It just felt like incest. That's the only way I can describe it. Uh, what? Not the answer we were hoping to hear, but why not just let it happen anyways? We wonder if director David Yates knew of the discomfort between the actors, because he really just wanted to get a whole lot of takes of them snogging. <laughs> they weren't even aware of this rubbish until it was far too late for them to back out. And when they found out, you can just really tell they were not looking forward to it. Doing the kiss between Ron and Hermione in, this the, week. This week. in the Chamber of Secrets. Number three, siblings fight. Yes, but turning into old people and then fighting? Just another explained incident in the magical world you muggles wouldn't understand. These troublesome twins were ready to take on each other in the arena great hall. But was this one as believable as the one the Phelps twins would have in real life? Well, to director Mike Newell, these boys needed to step it up a notch. Cut! Cut it! Okay, who wants to fight? But as every good director needs to get their hands dirty, it seemed to Mike that jumping in and tackling one of them was the best idea. We can't dream of a more hilarious moment for the others to experience on set, but certainly hope Newell learned his lesson here after injuring himself. Number 4. This mama bear is not about to let her kid get eaten. And we'd be confident in saying that a battle with Voldemort would be much better than taking the flying car out for a ride and getting yelled at by Molly Weasley. Where have you been? But is Julie Walters all like that in real life? No. Quite the opposite. She can even find the happiest of places in the darkest of scenes and joke around with the Death Eater in the process. Lovely working with Helen, she's such fun. <laughs> And look at all those moves! Julie in plain clothes is almost unrecognizable with her spouting imaginary spells at her co-star. Looks like both witches enjoyed this scene a lot. They just both needed to get out a little goofy energy. This moment was just too serious to jump right into. Who's next? <laughs> Number 5. Look out, Snatchers. You've got a track star in your midst. Yeah, hit it. Hit it at quite a pace and then just sort of flopped over it. There's no denying that scene in Deathly Hollows Part 1, where the three are running away from the Snatchers, was a really well done chase scene. But apparently, it was very difficult for Rupert to slow down, as if they weren't going fast enough to begin with. Emma Watson explains his newfound talent a little more in detail. Like <laughs> James Bond style, well, I can't wheel over it. <laughs> Imagine if that was a crossover. 007 takes out Voldemort. You can send us a check anytime for that idea, Warner Brothers. Number 6. Everyone could feel the awkward energy here. And we mean everyone. This leg moves first, right? Can you imagine elegantly waltzing with an older co-star in front of all your on-set friends? We can't. 
But if you had any questions for anyone there at the time, we're sure they can tell you how it was. Just probably not Rupert. He's really trying to forget this moment ever happened. Your right hand on my waist. What? On my waist! We can all appreciate a healthy dose of embarrassment behind the scenes. But what's even better is that the Phelps twins found this a great opportunity to push Grint to his utmost uncomfortability. They took this as an opportunity to make sure Grint was the center of attention and blushing from awkwardness at every moment. Now you will have to lead eventually. Understood? Number 7. There was no grin from Grint here. No, never. <laughs> what? Who doesn't love it when young actors get a little embarrassed in the makeup chair? We can only imagine how wild it is to be thrown into a massive production, but to get powdered up at a mere 11 years old? Because he doesn't like the clip in his head. Yeah! <laughs> Some of us could get past a lot of production's demands for a couple million dollars just to get those student loans paid off. But we can totally understand a young Rupert's embarrassment when having a camera shoved a little too close to our faces. Reportedly, this was the last and only time he allowed cameras in the makeup room. Totally understandable, fellow wizard. It is just so adorable though seeing a baby Grint blush from embarrassment. Number 8. It's all fun and games until someone breaks a wand, of course. <laughs> but the good thing here is that it looks like Rupert and Dan were just blowing off some steam before work. They are by no means masters at the game they're attempting to play, but it looks like Rupert is kidding the most out of this one. Though we can't imagine Rupert not letting the chosen one win a few rounds, even though Dan's ball passing skills are a little rough. Number 9. Sometimes even the best of wizards can let go every once in a while. And a little sherry can certainly go a long way here. If any character in Harry Potter deserved a little sherry, it's Molly Weasley. Not only have her and Arthur taken care of all the Weasleys, but they even helped orchestrate the fight against the Dark Army. So why not let Julie Walters have a little fun at her own son's wedding? And of course, let Mark Williams poke a little shade in her direction. That's mommy. She's had a bit too much hair. Number 10. Candy can do wonders on a child. Sometimes good, but more than a few times, bad. Hey Rupert, you like those? Sweet. <laughs> Director Christopher Columbus made the unfortunate mistake of giving a young Rupert candy in the train car scene in Sorcerer's Stone, and it looks like he might have shared it with Dan as well. Okay, no, no. I have to get this Merlin guy, it like, totally goes with my uh, shirt. Like These two couldn't even keep it together when the makeup artist was trying to sparkle them up before takes. But these two were definitely up to something. We speculated before about this moment, and there's no denying now that the Harry Potter musical was born at this moment. Okay. My name is Gareth. My, my name is Gareth Booms. Yeah, I, I. Number eleven. A little louder for the ones in the back. <laughs> Bonnie Wright's only got a couple of juicy scenes in the Potter franchise, so each one had to count. And things definitely started to pick up for Ginny in Order of the Phoenix. But when it came time for her to bring on the Alpha Quidditch Captain moment, she needed a few takes for the crowd to actually hear her. Please, quiet, please. Shut it! Whatever wand spell thing the Minister of Magic pulled at the beginning of Goblet of Fire should do the trick. Number 12. The chaos duo on film. And on set, apparently. Oliver and James Phelps were notorious behind the scenes for pulling pranks. Some minor, and some definitely destructive. You know they switched names on production multiple times throughout the years of shooting? That one didn't produce any big consequences. But when the filmmakers did, they evidently had to reshoot a couple of their scenes. But the minister of all pranks comes when the twins stole a set construction worker's walkie-talkie and decided to blow some steam between takes. In the end, they got a big talking to by the director, and we can only imagine they'd keep all walkie-talkies secured and locked up after that. Number 13. Was it just us? Or was Rupert having a little too much fun puking up slugs? Say something! And... <laughs> <laughs> Any puking or hurling sounds is a no-go from us. We can't believe how many of the actors behind Rupert were actually able to stomach that. 
including Grint. They all looked like they had way too much fun filming this bit. The twins took no delay in making sure Ron was the center of attention, making it a complete embarrassing moment for him. We never knew there was a right way to puke up slugs. We figure, for the sake of everyone's stomachs, they could have just done one go of it and given everyone a much needed break. Number 14. After all the countless hours on set, maybe it was a necessity for someone to bring Rupert to Pinata to smash. attempt to smash. To be a little more accurate here, given Ron's track record with wands breaking and misspelling, we think they should have thought twice before giving him a blunt object around other people. Number 15. Come on, Ron. You have one job. I usually read them before we start. I always felt that. I was quite late reading the last one. If you were one of the stars of the biggest film franchises in the world, wouldn't you jump at every opportunity to make sure you knew what was happening next to your character? Well, lo and behold, the almost real-life Ron Weasley actor just couldn't bring himself to read any of the books on time before filming. I, I left it quite late. I, I was probably the last one to read it. In the world, ever. Probably. <laughs> We mean, he did get around to getting them read eventually, but he really just took the whole my name's Ronald Weasley thing a bit too much into his personal life. Or maybe it was just the other way around? We mentioned too many bloopers with Rupert than we'd like to count, but that doesn't mean the rest of the Weasley family's antics should be left out. So if you had to share an elevator with one of the Weasley family members, which one would you choose? Let us know in the comments.